Hi and welcome to another RoteWeast.com Excel screencast. Today's screencast is going to give you a quick tutorial on how to add a watch to a variable or expression in VBA. This is going to be used to debug code and to help clarify the process that's going on when we run code. So last time we created a variable, variable that's going to sum our dynamic range that we've created over in cell A4 under the data heading. It's going to sum the range and display a message box telling us the number of data points and the sum of the range. So if we just run it, you'll see very simple number of data points 4, sum of data points 100. We had 20 to here. Run it again. We'll see we've changed dynamically. Now we have 5 data points. Sum of the data points is now 120. Okay, so let's step over to the code. If you don't already have the watch window displayed, we go up to view and down to watch window. And that'll display our watch window. And the way we the way the watch window works is we pick an expression or a variable in VBA. It's it's very useful for um, debugging loops where you have a bunch of variables changing values. And so we do have a loop in this in this macro. If we go down to the loop, we have a for each next loop that's going to sum each cell in our dynamic range and add it to this data sum variable, which in the end is going to equal our dynamic range total sum. So to add a watch, we can do it a couple ways. We can come up to the top and click debug, add watch. And the watch I want to add is the data sum. We want to add our expression. Our expression is going to be our variable in this first case. And the other expression that we want to watch is the cell.value expression. So we want to make sure that this data sum and this cell.value are adding together properly so that we get the right total. So another way we can add a watch is we can right click on the cell.value expression. We can come down, select add watch from the list. Our expression right now is value. That's not quite right. We want it to be cell, our variable cell dot value. This is going to give the value of each cell as we loop in the range. Um, a couple other things to note, the procedure, it's, it shows you the procedure and the module. These variables are all strictly restricted to the module one sum range procedure. Um, in the next lesson we'll get into the difference between public and private variables. But for now we're just going to click OK. And you'll see before we start or before we initialize the macro, both of these data sum and cell dot value variables appear out of context. That means that no other procedure can use them right now. They have they are not in our computer's memory. We have to initialize the macro for them to be stored in memory. So we're going to do that. We're just going to initialize the macro. And what you'll see when we initialize the data sum, because it is a data type, it will initialize to the default value or to the initialized value which is zero for data types. So we're just going to put a we're just going to put a breakpoint in our macro, run to the breakpoint, and now we'll watch in the watch window what the values of our expressions are and we'll see how they're adding together. So if we push F8 to run through one line, we notice the cell.value expression has its first value. So the first value in this dynamic range is 10. And we'll see when we run this line of code, the data sum variable will add its current value to the cell.value and we'll come up with our new value. So now it'll be 10. The next cell value is 20, we'll add that to 10, we'll get 30. The next cell value is 30, add that to 30, we'll get 60. And the next cell value is 40, finally add 60 and 40, and you get our final total of 100. And now we, we know that our loop is working properly. So we can exit the loop. Just for fun, let's add and one more um, watch to our message variable. We can see how our message variable is gonna be created. Again, add watch with the expression msg. And you'll notice when it initializes, because it's a string variable, it will give us an empty set to start. Now if we run this line of code, we can see our message variable builds the first line of our message box. We run it one more time, it builds the second line of our message box. Probably a better way to debug in the case of a string or in the case of something such as this msg variable is instead of using the watch window to just use the immediate pane in the debug.print command and if 
we come back up here and run this line of code again, it's going to tell us exactly what our string is in the same format as it's actually going to look when we put it in the message box. So we finish out our macro, message box, come back, end the sub. So there you have it, a basic introduction to the watch window. I want to thank you for watching this video on brettweiss.com. Have a great day.